Let me introduce you to Peter Belknap. He's the Director of Fusion Middleware Product Management for Oracle Corporation. He was formerly with BEA Systems before that they were acquired by Oracle. And he is a, a world-recognized uh, expert in complex event processing, which he'll define for you in just a moment. As you'll learn, this is becoming more and more important to uh, utilities. have been important to other industries for a while. But it's not an area that most utilities know uh, real well. So we're uh, lucky to have the chance to have Peter here to help us get acquainted and understand those ch challenges. Peter? Hi, Jesse. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And, um, and thank you also to Accenture for the, the chance to speak to you all today. Um, I think you guys can see everyone on the call is probably pretty familiar with the challenges. Um, we all know that advanced uh, automatic meter readings are, are coming in 15 minutes instead of once a month. We're all aware that we're putting lots of new sensors out on the grid, that consumers are uh, demanding much, um, much more um, timely information about their usage, that uh, compliance requirements are rapidly evolving, that there are all sorts of new requirements coming at uh, the business requirements of for IT uh, driven by smart grid. And at Oracle, we see this as a fairly revolutionary change in this industry and see that uh, there's a gathering recognition across the industry for uh, the concepts of service-oriented architecture and event-driven architecture as ways to make sure that we can perform uh, reliably and fast enough to handle these uh, uh, several orders of magnitude increases in data and uh, improve the integration, as Jesse uh, alluded to several times. Um, there's data coming in that's going to be meaningful to multiple business processes. Uh, this is going to put stress on any integration architecture. Uh, as we're building this out, we want to make sure that we've got more ability to see what's going on, both during the development time and once these new processes have been deployed. And in general, you know, what we see here is the, the primary attributes of a service-oriented architecture, uh, uh, business agility, flexibility, and responsiveness uh, apply in spades to this set of business problems. Now, as you can imagine, you know, Oracle, most people think of us as a, as a database company. Uh, there's a huge uh, set of problems here uh, in dealing with the data tsunami uh, that you can imagine Oracle has products uh, in, the, in that space database products, uh, data quality, uh, bulk transfer, uh, business intelligence tools. Um, there's also a, a suite of products for implementing service-oriented architectures. Today we're going to focus uh, very specifically on one tool out of that suite of products called complex event processing. Peter, um, I'm, I'm curious, what other industries um, have grappled with this and how do their data uh, requirements compare to what we're starting to see for, for smart grid? A lot more, a lot less? Where, where does the, the smart grid rank? Jesse, I'm uh, all prepared to answer that as soon as the next slide comes up. I might need a little help from John here because I'm, sure. I'm poking at my... Here, there we come. Go. Okay. Right, so um, there are some particular kinds of problems that complex event processing is aimed at. And uh, the first bullet here talks about filtering, correlating, and aggregating events from very high volume streams with consistent low latency. And when I say high volume and consistent latency, I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of events per second uh, with guaranteed uh, throughput of sometimes you know, sub-millisecond uh, latency. And industries where this is critical, uh, financial services, front office algorithmic trading, uh, one can, everybody can understand the value of executing a trade faster than the competition. Um, there's a whole new set of business problems coming up in the digital marketing space, um, real-time tracking of what uh, cable and satellite TV viewers are doing with their remotes. Uh, it's a bit scary. Uh, the the uh, amount of visibility that people have there. Um, I should just talk briefly what I mean by filter, correlate, and aggregate. Um, there's a huge amount of value in being able to uh, select out of these high volume streams uh, only the messages and events that are important. Um, in, in most business cases, you take any event stream, uh, most likely a particular business process is going to only need to see 
a small number of the events coming in on that stream. Um, correlate, correlation is really more like let's, let's capture all of the events of a particular category, like all of the alarms from a particular meter or all of the alarms uh, from a particular region um, and correlate them into some sort of summary event. Um, aggregation, we're really talking about taking data from multiple sources. Um, could be all real-time event messages or it could be a combination of events coming in in real-time with um, stateful uh, data, perhaps in you know, a grid state. Um, you need to be able to do all of these extremely fast and be able to predict that you can meet uh, very tight SLAs. Uh, Peter, uh, we did have a question uh, to, uh, if you'd repeat or give us an industry definition of SOA and EDA from your first slide. And in case that was a problem for others, I wanted to interject that right now. Sure. A SOA is service-oriented architecture. Um, we could talk for a long time about uh, the value and the particulars of that. Uh, it's basically an architecture based on presenting uh, information uh, from business, service, business processes, usually via web services, but it's really about the concept of a layered, loosely coupled architecture. Don't really have time to get into much more detail there. An event-driven architecture, uh, EDA, is more um, an, an architecture based on processing events in real time, uh, quickly dispatching them off to uh, business processes without necessarily having to ask the business process itself to process all the events. Thank you. So we keep looking at other industries. I think in the utility space and in the Homeland Security, the other example I have here, uh, the ability to handle um, events uh, the, and other data sources. So um, understanding the, the state of the grid when a meter alarm comes in, um, understanding um, where your mobile unit tracking, uh, where your mobile units are, uh, and, and being able to um, correlate um, motion from uh, one moment to the next, changes in the state of your assets. Um, in the Homeland Security area, we can imagine um, there's been a lot of press about um, filtering and making sense of all of the sensor information coming back, in particular uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan from unmanned drones. Uh, you need to correlate in real time information coming in with um, devices that are mobile and other states that you know at the same time. So what we're really trying to do here is come up with a tool that can filter this data, process these incoming events before you send them back into your database, before you pass them on to your business logic. This, in the end, will save you a ton of money both in storage space and in the cost of having to and upgrade or customize the application when you can do the data filtering up front. 